Do you have dry, scratchy, irritated eyes? The problem may actually be your eyelids. In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Irene Hossein will be discussing an eyelid condition called blepharitis that can lead to dry eyes and eyelid irritation. Dr. Hossein? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Miami, Florida, Dr. Irene Hossein. Dr. Hossein, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, absolutely. Thank you for joining us today, taking the time out of your day to be with us. Uh, so Dr. Hossein, before we get started, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, tell them a little bit about your background and your specialty. Sure, yeah. So um, I am a primary care optometrist practicing in Miami currently, and I treat all things um, from anterior to posterior ocular disease and um, definitely am interested in a little bit of myopia control and other refractive air treatment. Well, perfect. Then thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Hossein. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so for our discussion today, Dr. Hossein, we were hoping that maybe you can discuss with us a, a little bit about blepharitis to our viewers. What exactly is blepharitis? So blepharitis sounds like a funny word, but it's an inflammation of the eyelid margins. Well, thank you for that explanation, Dr. Hossein. And uh, I was hoping maybe you can go a little bit further into explaining uh, blepharitis, specifically anterior versus posterior blepharitis. Yeah, so blepharitis is an all-encompassing word, meaning inflammation of the eyelid margins, but it could stem from a couple different things. So we have anterior blepharitis, which has more to do with the follicles of the eyelashes. So it's an accumulation of a little bit of oil and bacteria that's excreted naturally from our follicles. But if it builds up a little bit too much, that's when we get the crustiness and um, the inflammation and, and the symptoms associated with that. Now, posterior, similar symptoms, but uh, we're talking about a little bit different area anatomically. We're talking more so the, the inside of the uh, oil glands kind of on the inner eyelid margin that get inflamed. Well, perfect. Thank you for explaining the difference between anterior and posterior blepharitis to us. And uh, Dr. Hossein, I was hoping that maybe you can explain to us, how do people get blepharitis? Like what causes it exactly? So a lot of times it's, like I said, it's naturally, the oils are nat naturally excreted from our lash follicles and our meibomian glands. However, some of us have a little bit more oil production. It could be caused from various reasons, um, hormonal changes or oftentimes correlated to if we have sort of a dermatitis or um, scalp or brow sort of dandruff. Um, and if it's not, if we don't maintain well um, ocular hygiene, then it can build up and, and cause that irritation. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Hossein. And I know you said uh, if we don't keep up proper eyelid hygiene, uh, it, it, it could continue. Is there a way to prevent it? Yeah. So for... Um, most of us who don't have severe uh, blepharitis or um, severe excretions from the eyelid areas, we just want to make sure to keep that area clean. I know a lot of us don't really think about cleaning around our eyes. We just kind of splash our face, wash our face. Um, but typically you wanna use a mild soap or even over-the-counter um, products that target that area. Well, perfect. Thank you for that information, Dr. Hossein. And uh, are, are there some like warning signs or symptoms that uh, like our audience or people should be on the lookout for to let them know like, hey, I, I may have blepharitis? Yes, great question. So um, if you're feeling burning or um, irritation or itchiness, um, it could also manifest in like a foreign body sensation. And then you also get a little bit of crustiness. Sometimes the crustiness is not visible to the naked eye. So um, kind of can encompass all of the above. Gotcha. Well, again, thank you for that information, Dr. Hussain. And um, if someone thinks they do have blepharitis, though, what's the next step? Like, when is it time to call you and then let you know, like, hey, I, I need I need help? Well, it's never a bad idea to just go in and get checked out anyway, but um, you can always start with over-the-counter products. So OcuSoft is actually a fantastic one. Um, that's one I recommend to my patients all the time. But um, 
You can use, you know, just any sort of over-the-counter product that affects the eyelid area and targets that bacteria. And um, if it's still not getting any better, you're still experiencing those symptoms, then that's a definite sign that you should have your eyes evaluated. Well, excellent. Thank you for that, Dr. Hussain. And thank you for uh, having a having user of our products. Uh, so, and, and I know you talked a little bit about what, what people should use, but do you have a typical treatment protocol for your patients when it comes to blepharitis? Yeah. So like I said, OcuSoft is actually typically my go-to and I will have them in office and kind of give them out as samples on the regular. So I give them out to you know, cleanse the eyelid area in the moist towelette form and then um, doing that twice a day. Um, and then that's kind of like the first line of treatment um, and warm compresses can help as well. Well, excellent. Thank you for that information, Dr. Hossein. And I know you kind of touched on it a little bit throughout the interview, and I, I know we, we've touched on it a lot, but uh, maybe uh, just talk a little bit more about how, how important is eyelid hygiene uh, for everyone? So, I mean, I am an eye care provider, and so I feel passionate about eye care hygiene in the sense that we should um, treat it the way we do brushing our teeth every day. I mean, um, you know, we clean around our teeth, we wash our face. I think we also need to target the eyelid area, you know, before bed or in the morning when we wake up as well. Well, perfect. There you hear it from Dr. Hossein. Make sure you are uh, washing your eyelids uh, every single day, just like brushing your teeth. <laughs> and so Dr. Hossein, does hypochlorous acid play a role in your protocol measures at all? Yeah, so if um, the eyelid wipes on its own and warm compresses and things like that aren't really um, giving us as much treatment and results as we'd like, then I like to add that um, hypochlorous acid product as well. So typically in spray form, just kind of spraying it over the eyelids and then rinsing maybe a, twice a day as well. Oh, well, perfect. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Hossein. And uh, let's just say the people watching today, they just go like, you know what, I, I think I'm fine. Like, I'm going to, we're not going to treat this blood for eyes. We're just going to keep it going. What would happen if someone was uh, to say, like, if, if blepharitis went untreated, what would happen? Um, well, uh, I, I would hope that nobody is like, you know, this doesn't matter, but um, it could just, I mean, your symptoms will get worse. Like you'll get, you'll feel more irritated. You'll, you'll just really be uncomfortable. Um, it could lead to infection of the surface of the eye. So um, hopefully nobody's just letting it go. <laughs> Well, definitely not. Uh, yeah, definitely. We want to make sure everyone's cleaning their eyelids daily, like you said. Uh, so, Dr. Hossein, before we uh, leave today, was there anything else that you wanted to tell our audience? Um, just to remember to clean around your eyelids. <laughs> like, Think about brushing your teeth and then cleaning your eyes, too. Not with the same toothbrush, but, you know. Well, perfect. Uh, excellent. Well, you heard it from Dr. Hossein there. Uh, everyone, that was Dr. Irene Hossein from Miami, Florida. Dr. Hossein, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.